Hello everyone, um, welcome to uh, English. I'm going to be talking uh, about both English literature and English language this evening. Um, I'll just wait until the clock ticks right on to uh, 5.45 before I start properly um, so that if anyone else is, is joining us, they, they won't miss the beginning. OK, so welcome this evening. Uh, my name is Jane McCard and I'm curriculum leader for English and working away in the background this morning is and this evening rather is Andrew Jackson. He's assistant curriculum leader for English. Uh, Andrew will be dealing with your questions. So any questions that you've got at all, uh, do type them in the chat and Andrew uh, will deal with them or uh, we will uh, deal with any remaining questions uh, at the end of the session. So if you ask a question, please don't worry, we will get round to it before we finish. So this session is going to last for approximately 30 minutes uh, and the aim is to give you an idea of what studying this course or these courses will be like. Uh, we'll look at both literature and language. So if you've got any questions, type them in the chat box. box. Your questions will be anonymous and we'll do our best to answer sensible and relevant questions by the end of the session. So don't worry that you're, you're re revealing things you don't want to. All questions are anonymous. OK, so um, in this session, um, we're going to be thinking about uh, both English literature and language, um, thinking about what each course involves, but also thinking about the difference between the two. Because one of the questions that uh, we get asked quite a lot is, well, what's the difference between the two courses? So I thought I'd start just by talking through a, a little bit about that. So if we start with English language, well, in English language, we learn about different types of spoken and written language and how to analyse them closely. So we're not just looking at you know, written literature, we're looking at speech as well. We explore both non-fiction and fiction genres. We study language issues such as language acquisition, that's how children learn to talk, power, standard and non-standard English, so things like accents and dialects, and language and identity. We explore how language has changed over time. We develop creative writing skills as well. English literature, well, we read a wide range of novels, poetry and plays. And we study texts from Shakespeare right the way through to modern novels, such as The Kite Runner. We focus on particular genres of literature, such as tragedy, crime writing or political and social protest. And we explore how context affects the texts we read. We also consider the different ways in which texts can be interpreted, so different kind of readings of texts and apply different critical theories to literature. So that gives you an overview about what the key differences are between English literature and English language. The next question really is well, why study language or literature? Well, the first reason is that studying for an A-level in English will enable you to develop transferable skills. So we're thinking about skills like close and critical reading, um, synthesis skills, um, being able to structure and uh, write essays, being able to develop an argument, uh, being able to uh, discuss and debate. Um, so a very wide range of skills that both courses uh, will develop and they're skills that are relevant to a wide range of degree courses and valuable to a wide range of employers. So you don't necessarily need to be going to do English at university in order to benefit from doing English at A level. And perhaps even more importantly, they're both really enjoyable subjects to study. Um, 
English students, you know, always say that, you know, it's it's an enjoyable subject. They enjoy lessons, they enjoy what they study and they can see it in the world around them. It has real relevance to them. So I'm going to talk now uh, a little in a little bit more detail about both English literature and then English language. So English literature stimulates both the intellect and the imagination. And it's a rewarding challenge as well. No A-levels easy, they're all challenging, but you do get a real sense of reward from them. Literature is ideal if you love reading. And it's full of thought provoking discussions and texts. So if we're thinking about what our students say about literature, what, what do they say about it? I won't read all of these quotations through to you, um, but you can see some of the key things that our students have, have said. I, I like the idea about being a detective, but without the danger. Um, thinking about the skills that you develop. And um, thinking about the structure of lessons and how you might look outside of the box for answers. Um, lessons being dynamic and interesting. And I really love that last one. I've enjoyed every minute. So what does the course involve then? Well, in year 12, um, you will start off by studying William Shakespeare's tragedy, Othello. Um, the first year of the course really focuses you on this key genre of tragedy. So rather than just kind of, you know, reading several different books, you are reading things that will develop your understanding and critical knowledge of an important genre. Um, and so the first is Shakespeare, who I'm sure you're all familiar with from having studied Shakespeare at school. Um, Othello is a, a really exciting uh, play with a, a lot of things to uh, discuss and, and debate in it. You will also study some tragic stories told in poetry. So what we call narrative poetry by John Keats. Keats was a romantic poet. Uh, by romantic, we don't mean that he was writing about love. It's referring to a particular period of literature, um, which is kind of characterised by an engagement with nature, things that are a little bit wild, um, a focus perhaps on the supernatural. Uh, and the poems that we, we look at by Keats are Lamia, uh, La Belle Dame Sans Merci, Isabella or The Pot of Basil, and the Eve of St Agnes. And all of these poems tell a story and these stories are quite tragic stories, very tragic in, in some cases. We also study modern drama. So you'll be looking at Arthur Miller's tragedy, Death of a Salesman, which is a, uh, a really important 20th century text. In the year 13, there are two pathways uh, and you will study one of those pathways. And that depends on um, the, 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 the teacher that you have and the group that you are in. Um, I wouldn't worry about which one uh, I ended up studying. Uh, I know that students really enjoy uh, both pathways um, and there's, um, there's a lot of really exciting and engaging study, um, both in crime, um, and for crime, you will uh, again look at uh, both novels and poetry as well. Uh, you look at a, a couple of 20th century novels, uh, Brighton Rock and uh, Ian McEwan's Atonement. And you'll also look at more poetry, Coleridge, almost but not quite contemporary Keats, uh, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. The other pathway is political and social protest writing. Uh, and uh, for this option, you will look at the poetry of uh, William Blake. Uh, you'll actually study a, a play. So instead of two novels, one of the texts is a play, which is Henry Gibson's A Doll's House. And you'll also look at uh, Hassini's The Kite Runner, um, which is a, a very recent, well, a reasonably recent uh, novel, modern fiction. And as well as the uh, exam texts, so for that part of the course, you are studying texts in class 
uh, and then you will sit exams on those texts. So paper one is based on your first year study of tragedy and paper two is based on your year 13 study of crime or political protest. As well as those, uh, you will do a non-exam assessment, which is uh, coursework, basically. Um, and for your coursework, you will study one prose text and one poetry text. But again, it's a, a little bit different to your study at GCSE, because as well as studying these books, you're going to study some literary theory. So you're going to be uh, looking at the way in which academics have read and criti criticised literature. Um, so you might be looking at ideas about narrative. Uh, and feminist ways of reading. So we're looking at these different ways of reading, these different schools of criticism and applying those ideas to the text that we read. And then you write an essay on each of the texts you study. So as well as being able to write about the text, you need to be able to write about literary theory as well. So that gives you a very brief overview of English literature. Remember that if there are any questions that you feel we haven't dealt with that you, you want us to address, do ask them in the chat. I'm now going to go on to talk a little bit about A-level English language. Now, language will stimulate your curiosity about language. Have you ever changed the language you used based on where you are and who you are with? You wondered why your teachers speak differently to you than they do to each other. Notice how people from different regions speak differently. Um, these are all questions that English language will help you answer. And English language at A level is very, very different to GCSE. Language allows you a chance to actively engage with everyday language and understand how it works. Language is ideal if you're interested in how language works in the real world. So not on the pages of a book, but in everyday usage. And language is full of thought provoking discussions, concepts and issues. Um, so what do we study then on the English language A level? Well, we start off by looking at concepts and issues and we look at those specifically in spoken language. So we study how spoken language works in a range of contexts. So we might look at um, political interviews or documentaries or reality television shows. We also study key language topics, acquisition, situation, power and non-standard English. And again, this is a slightly different approach to school um, because what we don't do in English language is we don't study things and then write exams on them. So you would be doing analysis of unseen texts. So we learn about different genres and we learn about the skills needed to do analysis and then we apply those in the exam. Uh, and the same with the, the language topics, you learn about a topic and then you would be able to write an essay about that topic in an exam. We also look at language change over time. And again, there's a key focus here looking at genre. So you will learn how language has changed over time and how to analyse text from different times. Thinking about key characteristics of genre and the societies in which they were written. So we go right the way back to 1600 and to early modern English, and we look at how that variety of English, the, the sort of language that Shakespeare wrote, how that is different to modern day uh, English. And again, we might look at, for example, travel writing or diary entries or letters or newspaper reports. We also look at language specifically in the 21st century. Um, so social media, for example, things like Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, the use of email uh, and the way that we use language in a very different way in this century to how we use language in the past. We also, uh, in the English language A level, um, do creative writing, creative and critical use of language. So you'll learn how to write effectively and also how to review your own creative writing, how to analyse your own writing uh, in a range of fiction and non-fiction genres. And like English literature, there is a coursework element to English language as well, the non-exam assessment. Uh, and in English language, we focus on language and identity. 
So the language that we use is a really important part of who we are and the coursework gives you a chance to explore that. So you select an aspect of study that interests you from a list of topics relating to language and identity. That might be language and self-representation. So the way that I present myself, the way that I have different identities in different roles, for example. So you might look at the way that your language changes between when you're talking to your friends and when you're talking to a teacher. Or you might look at language and gender, um, looking at whether men and women speak differently, for example. You might want to look at culture. So things like um, religion and how we express our identity in the language of religion or the language of sport or language diversity. Um, so you might want to look at somebody, Stormzy, for example, who in his songs uses non-standard English in order to create his own identity. And uh, how will a speaker do that? So that's given you a really brief whistle stop tour through English language as well. So the first key question we were asked is what are the difference between the two? The second one is, well, which one should I take? And that's a really difficult question and only you can decide that really. Um, there are some kind of pointers though. Firstly, English literature is the more traditional option. It's much closer to what you have studied at school. Um, so if you enjoy English literature at school, at GCSE, if you like reading, if you like writing essays, it's a pretty fail safe option. And it is also important to bear in mind that most English courses at university focus more on literature unless you choose to study specifically linguistics. So if you're thinking of going on to do English at university, literature is the more common one to to take and really you know do make sure that you uh, have checked with universities if you want to do English language A level but you want to do English at university you do need to double check with individual universities to make sure whether that is suitable for doing an English degree and literature is great if you're passionate about reading a wide range of literature if you enjoy structuring and writing academic essays so you know if you love reading and you love you know, structuring an argument and putting across a point of view and supporting it with reference to critical readings and, you know, doing that kind of structuring and building an, an argument. Literature is great. English language is very different to English language at GCSE, and I can't stress that enough. Uh, really, English language at GCSE does not kind of prepare you for, for A level. Um, you know, the content of the A level is very, very different. With English language, we're developing research skills, analytical skills, your ability to interpret data. So it's a little bit more kind of scientific in a way, and it is very much based on you know, the real world. So language covers a much wider range of genres in literature. For example, journalism, legal language, documentaries, travel writing. So your knowledge of genre is actually going to end up much broader. Which has been an advantage for um, students who've gone into things like sports journalism, for example. And language does include creative writing as well as academic essays and analysis. So you do get that uh, experience of developing your creative writing skills as well. I think essentially the important thing really is to, to think about which subject you like the sound of the most, which excites you more, which do you think you're going to enjoy more at A level? Because both literature and language are serious, challenging academic subjects. Uh, and it really comes down to which excites you, which kind of lights your fire more. Because the one that you're more passionate about, the one that you're more enthusiastic about, that's the one that you're going to engage with more. And if you engage with it, you're going to be working hard. And if you work hard, you're going to get the result. Um, so bearing in mind, you know, the fact that literature is more like GCSE, that language is, you know, quite different based on the real world. Go for the one that you think, I, I really want to do that at A level. Um, as well as the A levels, um, I will just spend a couple of minutes talking about the enrichment links uh, that uh, you can follow up in the department as well. There are um, several enrichment courses that we offer. And enrichment, they are the things that you do in addition to your A-level programme, can boost your progression chances as universities, training providers and employers value the skills you develop by doing something extracurricular. 
Enrichment options that would particularly support your English studies include the English Academy, the College Magazine, EPQ and Creative Writing. EPQ is a particular qualification called the Extended Project Qualification. Uh, it's worth half an A-level um, and it is a, a way of developing and researching something that you're really interested in. And you'll be able to find out more about EPQ generally by looking at the college website. The three enrichments that we run in department are uh, the English Academy, the magazine and creative writing. And so I'll just talk a little bit about those three. The English Academy is a fantastic opportunity to extend your English skills, um, to work with uh, academics from uh, universities across the country uh, and to give yourself that, that little bit extra, particularly if you're thinking of applying for an English based course at university. Um, the Academy involves a series of seminars uh, with a range of academics from uh, different universities. So we work with the University of Oxford. Uh, we work with the University of Birmingham. Uh, we work with Aberystwyth University. Um, so uh, a really wide range of, of different academics, different universities, and they will present seminars on um, you know, key aspects of their current research um, and things that they are very excited about themselves. So uh, we've done sessions on Anglo-Saxon riddles, um, on the uh, Gothic literature of the Caribbean, um, on the literature of surveillance in the 21st century. Um, the members of the English department also offer uh, seminars as well. And then you choose something that you're interested in developing and you actually do an EPQ in that with the support of the English department. So the English Academy is a way of doing an EPQ which is relevant to English. It's open to both literature and language students and it's a way of really enriching your English study. The College magazine uh, has is a new enrichment that started this year. It's very much student led uh, and it's based by a, a, around a group of students who've come together to uh, write uh, and to design, lay out and produce uh, a magazine. And we've just finished the first edition of that. Um, and then creative writing is really a chance for you to develop your voice as a writer. Uh, it's a session that ha that takes place weekly. Um, you'll have kind of guided exercises uh, and a chance to really kind of explore writing in different genres and develop yourself as a writer. So they're enrichments that are uh, organised by the English department. In terms of careers and progression, where can you go with an English A-level? The first thing is you don't necessarily need to go and do English at university. Uh, English a level is, you know, supports a, a wide range of skills and a wide range of you know, progression to different um, degree courses. In terms of careers, uh, again, it supports a really wide range of careers. So things like law, publishing, acting, advertising, teaching, medicine, childcare, journalism, public relations, social work, the police force, the civil servant, retail management, and lots of other careers as well. Um, so a, a great A-level for supporting a whole range of careers. Um, so now I'll just check in with Andrew as to whether there's been any questions that we actually need to kind of answer live, as it were, rather than just in the chat. No questions that haven't answered in the chat. Right, lovely, okay. So Andrew says, thinks that all questions that have been asked um, have been answered. Um, if there is anything that you've still got to ask, you, you have got time um, to ask it uh, now. Um, I will just put up a final slide, um, which is on how to apply. So uh, if you need information on how to apply to college, uh, that slide is there. And we will just wait a couple of minutes to see if we get any more questions in. I think we've just got a couple of questions in. 
can you do this treatment like this alongside the creative writing enrichment? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, we had a question about can you do more than one enrichment? Um, that's problematic actually because enrichments take place in the same slot on a Wednesday. Um, you can do an enrichment and an EPQ because EPQ is timetabled at various times throughout the week. But unfortunately, the three enrichments that are run within the department, so the English Academy, the College Magazine and Creative Writing, they take place at the same time. So you can't do more than more than one. It would be a choice of a matter of choosing which you think you'd prefer. I would say that if you're more interested in journalism, go for the magazine. If you're more interested in um, kind of literary creative writing like poetry and, and short stories and so forth, do creative writing because I know the creative writing course. I think there's a greater focus there on poetry, things like flash fiction, um, whereas the college magazine, it's a much more um, kind of, you know, focus on non literary journalism. How would you recommend preparing for the English language course? Oh, preparing for the English language course. That's a lovely question. And I'm really pleased that you want to start preparing for it. Excellent. Um, I think the best way to prepare for English language uh, is to just do some reading of, um, you know, a, as wide a range of genres as you can, really. Um, a good broadsheet newspaper. So, you know, starting to read um, news articles and opinion articles from a good quality newspaper. So that's something like uh, the Guardian or the Times or the Independent or the, the Telegraph and um, those sorts of quality press um, reading some travel writing, um, reading um, even things like adverts, you know, looking at charity adverts, looking at the techniques. So reading even a bus ticket, you know, reading anything in a conscious way is really good preparation for English language and just thinking what's going on with this? What's this writer trying to do? Uh, who's the audience for this? Um, so reading a wide range of genres is great preparation for um, for English language. Um, if you wanted to look at a couple of websites, uh, David Crystal has an excellent website and he is uh, really good to read as well. So having a look at some of the things that David Crystal has uh, written on his website is really good prep. Any other questions, Andrew? How do I prepare for the Ah, how do I prepare for literature? Um, again, um, I, I think really um, perhaps doing some wider reading. Um, I mean, you can um, read the texts. Um, you, you know, you, you will all be doing a fellow. You will all be doing Keats's poetry. You will all be doing uh, Death of a Salesman. So, you know, one one thing is to to have a little look at those texts before you start. That certainly won't do you any harm. Um, going to the theatre, you know, Stratford is 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 back on now. And I think there's a, there's a really interesting production of Much Ado About Nothing there at the moment. Um, going to see something at the theatre is, you know, great preparation for, for literature. Just doing a bit of wider reading, um, you know, looking at perhaps Booker Prize winner lists. What has uh, come up in the Booker Prize winner uh, recently um, or the shortlist for that? Um, or just, you know, finding out about some good quality um, literature. Um, so, you know, Dickens, Austen, McEwen. Anyone else you'd recommend, Andrew? Um, it could be more than stuff, actually. Dystopian yeah. fiction, for example, anything you think you'd enjoy. Yeah, so dystopian fiction, it just, you know, Doing some re reading is great preparation um, for both literature and language. Yeah. Any other questions, Andrew? Nothing that hasn't been answered. OK. Um, well, hopefully that has been useful for you. Um, and we've answered all the questions that you've uh, you've got. Um, hopefully that's given you an idea of, you know, whether you want to do English literature or English language. We hope that uh, you know, it, it's it's excited you and, and you do want to do literature or language and we look forward to seeing you in September. So thanks for coming. Goodbye. <laughs>